Happy birthday to Anthony Smith, May 10th, Chantal McGill, May 11th, Whitney Poor on May 13th, and Francis Sheffrey on May 13th. And we lead us in the call to worship. Praise to the Lamb who was seated on the throne of heaven. Let us sing continually of God's wisdom and power and might. Worthy is the Lamb to receive honor and glory and majesty.
Salmeos, capítulo 23. Salmo de David. El Señor es mi pastor, nada me falta. En doleras, Padre, Padrás, me hace descansar. A las aguas tranquilas me conduce. Me da fuerza, nuevas fuerzas. Y me lleva por caminos rectos, haciendo honor a su nombre. Aunque crepasa el más oscuro de los viajes, no te daré peligro alguno, porque tú, Señor, estás conmigo. Tú, para y tu bastión me inspira confianza. Me has preparado un banquete ante los ojos de mis enemigos. Has vertido perfumes en mi cabeza y has llenado mi copa a rebosar. Tu bondad y tu amor me acompañan a los largos de mis días, a lo largo de mis días, y en tu casa, oh Señor, por siempre viviré. La palabra de Dios al pueblo de Dios. Church. Good morning. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce our speaker, none other than our very own Gloria McCauley. Gloria McCauley, a Durham native, has been a member of New Creation United Methodist Church and one of its predecessor churches since 1985. She has been very active in its missions and ministries and over the years has served on every church committee many, many times in leadership positions. She currently serves as lay member to annual conference, which carries with it membership on various local church committees. In addition, she has been active in United Methodist Women, the choir, the usher board, has been a children's church leader, Bible study leader, worship leader, lay speaker, etc. The list goes on and on. 
in addition to the local church, she has served on several district and conference committees and agencies. Most notably, she was the first African American lay leader of the Durham, now Corridor District. She currently serves on the Corridor District Committee on Ordained Ministry. She received her undergraduate education with honors from North Carolina Central University and her Master's at the University of North Carolina. She returned to NCCU to complete her JD in the evening program while working full time at Duke University and being a wife and mother. As you can tell, Gloria is able to do many, many things. She worked at Duke University in various human resources roles for a total of 37 plus years. A couple of those years, she was also doing legal work on the side. Under her leadership, many of Duke's family-friendly policies and programs were enhanced or developed. She was very instrumental in the development of the children's campus, Duke's on-site daycare center. She has represented Duke on several community boards, such as the YMCA, the Durham Area Transit Authority, now Go Durham, the Durham Partnership for Children, and the Durham Dispute Settlement Center. She retired in 2010, but returned several times to fill in when co-workers were on family leave. She's never, however, retired from church, and we are grateful for that. She loves to read, to sing, and to solve word puzzles, particularly online. She enjoys Bible study, helping others, fellowship with, and mission work with her church family and friends, and learning purely for her learning's sake. She loves her family, adoring her grandchildren. Above all, she is a child of God, surrendering her life to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She and her husband of 33 years, bless you, try home, are the proud parents of three sons and six grandchildren. After this music musical selection, we will be very grateful to hear the words from our very own Lord Macaulay.
with all the mothers and mother figures out there. Thank you. One of my favorite church children, <coughs> Melissa, for the introduction. And thank you, Pastor, I guess, <laughs> for inviting me to bring the message this morning. I would also like to thank my family for being here. Uh, some of them have been members of Asbury Temple, our predecessor church, uh, for all of my children. Uh, but you'll also see my grandchildren and my daughters as well. My text this morning is Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Please stand as you are able for the reading. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Please pray with me. <coughs> Lord, as I stand before you this Mother's Day, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. Some of just saying one of my very favorite songs. I am a living testimony. I entitled my thoughts this morning, I'm a living testimony, but still a work in progress. Many of us don't think that we have a Christian testimony. We think that a testimony must be something really significant or powerful. But I submit that we all have a testimony of some kind. As I look around the sanctuary this morning, I see that there are several of us who are of what, shall I say, a certain age. <laughs> and we know who woke us up this morning and who started us on our own. You can play, we know. <laughs> You see, as you age, you are a testimony. As you go through the mountains of life and get over and the valleys of life and get through, you know it's not luck or happenstance. It's the grace of God. It's God's love. God's mercy that's carrying you and you say, thank you, Jesus. Now, of course, you need to be older. I just use age because there have been more days and nights. I calculated that someone my age has lived 27,375 days. So there have been many mountains and valleys. And as others see you go over and through, you become a living witness of how they can also get through. The older you are, the more you know that you are meant to shine your light as a living testimony to the glory of the one who is among us. But this is Mother's Day. And what does testimony have to do with Mother's Day, you ask? Motherhood. And I speak of as I speak of motherhood, I am speaking of a person or people who have served to shape and nurture us. It may be a father, is often a grandmother, can be another relative, a friend, a neighbor, a teacher. DNA is not the only thing that defines motherhood. But the motherhood role provides a special opportunity to tell the story of God's love 
both in word and deed. It can be a powerful witness and is a special blessing from God. An old joke is God could not be everywhere, so he invented mothers. <laughs> in fact, motherhood is spoken of in scripture as a high and important call. God uses the metaphor of mothers in Isaiah 66, 13 to describe the ways he loves and cares for his children. He says, as a mother confronts, comforts her child, so will I comfort you, and you will be comforted in Jerusalem. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 8, Paul writes, just as a nursing mother cares for her children, we cared for you because we loved you so much. And we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel, but our lives as well. Yes, a high culture, but motherhood can be a challenging work. This is particularly true for young or inexperienced mothers. Though there are role models and books, you still don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> There's no real playbook. And additionally, each <coughs> child is so different, you have to learn how to parent them differently. There's a joke that God didn't put older women babies because they would forget where they put them. <laughs> I can identify them. what to do with them. So what do you do? You love them, you talk with others, often your mother. You use trial and error and you learn. And above all, you pray. Motherhood will put you on your knees a lot. Now, sometimes God does prepare younger women to instinctively know how to nurture, be mirror. But even she periodically pondered things in her heart. Some believe Jesus was a perfect child, but I think not. <laughs> Remember, he was part human. A part human boy child. Now, I'm not stereotyping, but how many of you have raised boy children? <laughs> I've raised three of you. And I'm sure at times Jesus caused Mary some anxious moments. What about the time he disappeared and was in the temple among the elders, learning, going about his father's <coughs> Yes. But he had not told his earthly parents where he was. He surely caused them anxiety and distress. Yes, even Jesus needed the love and support, guidance, teaching, nurturing, and prayer of his young mother, just like other children. I think God wanted him to experience what other human children did, if not. Why start him off as a baby? Mm -hmm. We also know that God has used older women, and sometimes really older women and men, to raise those whom he was calling for a special purpose. Mm -hmm. Think Elizabeth, who was over 60, or Sarah, who was 90. Young or older, parents, but particularly the mother figure provide a powerful witness in the lives of their children. A mother's influence is one of the most important influences that one will ever have. Mothers have a special opportunity to share the love of Christ with their children about how they live, how they teach their children to live. Being a positive role model for appropriate behavior is more effective than specific disciplinary measures in raising your children. Now, everybody's experience with their mother figure is not good. 
Sometimes mothers are struggling with their own demons and say and do hurtful things. But I would submit the behavior of those mothers also impacts the lives of their children, mm -hmm. sometimes even more than they realize. But this morning I want us to dwell on motherhood and parenting from a positive place. Either way, children learn through observations and often mimic the behavior of their parents, sometimes without even knowing why. Think of how many times you have said something to your children that you thought was illogical when it was said to you as a child. <laughs> If you don't stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> if you break your leg, don't come running to me. <laughs> and the proverbial, because I said so. Sound familiar? That reminds me of the story of a young woman who asked her mother why she always cut the ends off her hand. Many of you know this story. And her mother said, when she was repairing, I don't know, that's what my mother did. And so the young woman went to her grandmother and said, Grandma, why do you always cut the ends of the ham off when you're preparing? Grandma said, I don't know, that's what my mother did. So she went to the rest home to talk to great grandma. And she said, great grandma, why do you cut the ends off of a ham when you're preparing? Great grandma said, shucks. I did it because my pan was too small to hold the entire hand. <laughs> <laughs> so they all had just followed what had been modeled to them. No questions asked. Mm -hmm. Just following model behavior. What is modeled and taught may not always have the desired effect, but I assure you that children are listening and watching even when we are unaware. Proverbs 22.6 says, direct your children in the right path and when they are older, they will not leave. I sincerely believe that, but I would also add, if they do, they will come back. Mm -hmm. One of the most impactful things ever said to me by one of my children after he was broken was, and I paraphrase, growing up, I sometimes was in the position where I could have chosen to do things that could have gotten me in all kinds of trouble. But I would say, what would mama say if she saw me doing it? what would mom say. So apparently, I had done something wrong. I had witnessed by word and deed, and above all, I had prayed. I continued to pray for my children and my grandchildren, and I hope I am a witness, a testimony for them. Have I always given a good testimony? Probably not. But I hope that I gave them a good foundation. But this I now know. Sometimes telling the story is as important as living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As parents, we know how important teaching is, but as Christians, sometimes we, live, we lean a little too heavily on the living it mm -hmm. side of the question. Where would we be as Christians if the <coughs> apostles had not told the story? If they had not listened to the Great Commission to go and make disciples and had not told of Jesus' birth, death, and resurrection, how he healed the sick and raised the dead, had not passed on his teachings, and how he loved us so very much, he willingly took on our transgressions and paid it all how he rose on Sunday morning, and how he went to prepare a place for us. What we know 
only because of the way the disciples lived? I think not. We know because of their boldness, their witness, their testimony. So I want to spend a few minutes this morning telling you my story. The last couple of years have indeed been life-altering for me. In addition to COVID concerns, social unrest, political upheaval. In early 2021, I was referred to cardiology because of continuing shortness of breath and lightheadedness. I'd actually passed out a couple of times but heart monitors, EKGs, stress tests, all show nothing wrong with my heart. Yet I continued the symptoms. In addition, in April 2021, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was a scary diagnosis, but somehow I was not afraid. I was at peace. I knew I was walking this path with God and that he would see me through. I had just gone through five years of sur after surgery from a rare tumor that had been found on my pancreas. Often a very bad diagnosis. But I've been through that. So I, I knew I had walked this path. It was well with my soul. I've had several people remark about how peaceful I've been as I've gone through my cancer journey this year. And they've said I've been an inspiration to them, which was surprising to me. There have been times when I've actually surprised myself. I've not cried. I've not lamented. I've not asked why about the condition itself. I have been frustrated about delays and things not progressing the way I thought they would, but not about the diagnosis. <coughs> Philippians 4, 7 says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything anything we can understand. I knew he had control. I lived in him and I was at peace. The cancer was caught early and the prognosis was good. I was thankful. And as I continued with medications to shrink the tumor, scans, infusions, my shortness of breath and lightheadedness continued. My cancer surgery was scheduled for November, but had to be canceled because I was put on medication for my heart. The surgery was rescheduled for me in January. On December 22nd, as I was shopping, I started to feel faint. A woman asked if she should call the rescue squad. And I said, no, this has happened before. It'll go away and they never find anything wrong. After all, we had been to the ER at least twice and to urgent care once before. But my husband said something kept telling him we should call. Was it the voice of God? The paramedics found my heart rate was in the low 30s and we headed to the hospital. Even then, I was calm. In the ER, my heart rate went down to 21. Remember, it should be between 60 and 100. Complete blockage of my electrical system. I was dying. My son who was there said it looked like I was fighting to live. But I don't remember that. I remember feeling barely tranquil, and, and then something happened that was similar in scope to things that I had only read about. I remember seeing a light, and then 
three people standing in that hut. Now, different from the stories of others, I couldn't see their faces. But I saw only those three. No doctors or nurses who had been scurrying around me. No noise, not my son. Only the light and those three figures. Who were they? I don't know. Maybe one of them was my mother. Was it Jesus welcoming me into the light? The next thing I remember was that something that I assumed was a defibrillator was compressing my chest. It was extremely uncomfortable, but I was being brought back. They put a temporary pacemaker in, and the next day I had surgery so that they could put a permanent one in. Subsequently, my cancer surgery was rescheduled for yet a third time. But in retrospect, and remember, sometimes we can only see God's hand in retrospect. It was best that there had been delays in my surgery while they figured out what was wrong with my heart and corrected it. I finally had successful surgery in February, and I will finish radiation therapy May 16. As I have reflected, I realized that I had a near-death experience in the world. But for some reason, God sent me back. It's obvious he was saying, not yet. I still have things for you to do. You're not through yet. I'm not exactly sure I know what he brought me back to do. But I feel right now he's given me an opportunity to tell you my story, Amen. to be a witness to his redeeming grace. All God's children are called to be living, breathing testimonies, called as Christ-centered examples for us. To model what it means to be a child of God and how we speak and our behavior, our ministries to others, and above all in the way we love. It is important for us to realize the value of our testimony. Not only do our testimonies represent us coming to Christ, but they can also bring others to Christ as they hear. God can use our difficulties and our valleys to bring a blessing to others, to invite others to find the love of God through seeing Jesus in us. As one of my devotionals this week said, there are really five Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you and I. Think about it. With our imperfect selves, we can be a Gospel. One day, we'll be perfected. But until then, we are works in progress for which he has a purpose. One day recently, our younger children, and my husband and I were riding and we passed by a cemetery. The younger one remarked that all the flowers he saw. The older one, always ready to instruct his younger brother, said, that's where dead people are. Then he said, Nana, I sure am glad you're not over there. <laughs> I said, I am too. And then I thought, but I could have been. God brought me back. God brought me back to let his light shine through me to glorify him, to demonstrate to the world the truth of the gospel message. I have a testimony. What about you? Will you tell your story? Will you allow the light of your Christian witness to shine? I pray so. Amen.
all right to give you praise.
retired teachers are still educators. I'm going to ask you to stand. So we can
prepare to, for the great Thanksgiving, I'd like you to pause for just a moment and think about what this means and what Christ did for us on the cross. It's a great thing. So let us pause for a moment. The Lord be with you.
Christ, we have glimpsed you here as we have shared the bread and the cup. So help us to see your risen presence at work in our world and to join you in making all things new until you come again in glory and we feast again with you through all eternity. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. Let us stand as we prepare for our closing song.